Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Get off of my lawn. Happy birthday oh. to you. Well, okay. happy birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Milestone birthday. birthday. Yes. Milestone birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Okay. To All right. <laughs> okay. Sweet. All right. Uh, a lot of you were uh, were biatching because we uh, took Friday off. I usually take the Friday off around my birthday. That's what I do. I Most usually people take that, do. Yes. that three day weekend. So I do, and uh, we give you a lot of content. We give you more content than uh, I've ever given you in my career. So you know, uh, for the people that uh, you don't pay attention, you didn't hear Oscar at the end of Thursday's show. Make notice. But the reason we really took Friday off was because uh, Rob uh, had to say goodbye to his uncle mm-hmm, and yeah. had a service for his uncle, and so that. That was uh, the combination of both. We said, you know, can we do it? And we decided to do that. And Oscar was very forthright about it. And so there are always those two or three, <laughs> John Talamatisi, Weesey, whatever your name is, that always says, what's the deal? And uh, You should have seen you my don't, first you, uh, response to them early in the morning. Really? I actually, del- I'm not one to delete, Mike. Oh, did you second yes. guess yourself? Well, I wrote mm-hmm. something that was very blunt. <laughs> I am very aware. Let me let me just tell you so in this incarnation of the show, which uh, we are going to have our 10th anniversary coming up in December. Big deal. And that's a stun that's stunning to me yes. that we're still alive and kicking after all these years and I'm going to say that I understand that this form of the 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 show now people do want it. They want the content, they want it's, it. It's they don't want to be deprived of it. Yeah, but I just like to point out that uh, in the in the radio heyday I had a very significant Johnny Carson vacation schedule. <laughs> I recall this. We had eight weeks a year, and we stole a ninth. Mm-hmm. So that's we should be aware of that so fact. So we're, we're in uh, bonus time. We're to- totally in bonus time. And by the way, I'm saying this for one reason. I'm saying this for one reason. It is summertime, and we have modifications in the schedule summertime coming up this summer. Summertime in the summer. city. Yes. But Deal I do know this, me. Mike. If you, on the, in the classic days, if you had done this many shows that you have done this year, yeah, you could have taken the rest of the year off. <laughs> Precisely, you could have just banked it and gone. Exactly. So, uh, and we are delighted to welcome uh, someone who's uh, TV royalty in yes, Washington yeah. D.C. and has uh-huh. been a friend to this show for a very, very long time. Uh, she is not only a stunning television personality; she is one of the best in the business. She is also cutting edge as far as technology, and she has done something for years that she started a long time ago that I find one of the most engaging things where she takes a, uh, a laptop and puts it on the set of her television programs and is able to communicate with the audience while she's working. And I, I have gotten sucked into that so many times where I'll say, hi, Angie. And it's like, she can mention my name. She can mention my name. She can mention my name. And and so, uh, but I've done that a, a bunch of different times. And she is, uh, the. Uh, this is amazing. Uh, this woman, this is how amazing this woman is. She is the mother of 10. That's right. <laughs> and she is also, uh, she has worked at, uh, at every radio, uh, every television station in, uh, no, actually, Channel Four for a long, long time, and she's going to be, and she's going to be, and she's going to be going to Channel Five, and uh, we, we'll get to your uh, your co-anchor in a minute, which is the greatest TV name I've ever heard. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, she's here. She's Angie Golf, yeah. and <laughs> and let me let me tell you, the Oh My Golf podcast launched last Friday. The first three, it's phenomenal. It's it's fantastic. The first three episodes are now available, including interviews. Uh, the one that I watched with. Uh, with Alex Smith, and you also have the uh, Real Housewives of Potomac's Giselle Bryant, who will be on the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, these are available on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. I know, Oscar, you are very excited about the uh, Oh My Golf podcast that's, uh, uh, that's associated with Podcast Village. Yes, um, be more a Podcast delighted. Village production. Mike, you couldn't have said it best. Uh, when Angie 
uh, contacted us, I would say, roughly a year ago about, of the idea of of producing a podcast and just the idea. Yeah. Most people have an idea. And, and Mike, you know oh, the world is full of great ideas, but you have to actually execute them at times. Yes, yes. Um, for her to execute this while she was navigating her next steps in her career, uh, in my eyes, is uh, is – it's something that most can't handle, most right. don't do. And uh, Mike, as you've seen from the production, as we discussed yesterday briefly on the phone, uh, it is top notch one to for us to put something like that on the air, but also to work with the talent like Angie to bring the Oh My Golf show to fruition. And we're proud to be a part of it. Well, um, now, <laughs> yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, after Friday, I, I thought I was going to be banned after uh, Rob referred to me as a severe editor. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's doing television, essentially. Mike. Yeah. She's doing television. Well, tele- she knows television. what she's yeah, doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. She knows what she's doing. Now, <laughs> let me add to this that uh, after a brief hiatus, Angie returns to TV on July 8th in our nation's capital. She will be joining Fox 5 DC at 4 p.m. Eastern. And here's my favorite part. She will be co-anch- co-anchoring the station's 4 p.m. newscast with Blake McCoy. Is there, <laughs> is, has there ever been, I, I've never seen uh, Blake McCoy. I've never met Blake McCoy, but no, I'll tell you that name. Beautiful. A handsome man, Mike. A handsome Hi there. man. Hi, this is Blake McCoy. Blake <laughs> McCoy. Blake McCoy. This is one of the high. rare instances where Mike is launching an impression of someone he's never seen or heard. Uh, Blake McCoy. Hi, <laughs> hi, Warren. For some reason, it's a Simpsons voice. I can't help it. It's yeah. almost as good as uh, Ted Baxter. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> well, the guy definitely has abs. Oh yeah. My name's yeah. My name's yeah. Blake McCoy. I like a good glass of scotch. <laughs> and, uh, and my little dog Baxter here. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No, he is not Ron Burgundy. No. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, you're also now. Here's the the I, I want to ask you about this, Angie. You're going to be serving as the co-host of Like It or Not, weeknights at 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. Now, you are, I know you're a workaholic. You work your butt off. And uh, But is this going to be, uh, I, I have no idea. What is this show going to be, Like It or Not? Is it going to be a variety type thing? Uh, are you bringing back local, uh, cool TV? I mean, what's going on? Well, I mean, I am returning to TV, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to keep those glasses on for the entire time? They say you happy gonna, uh, birthday, Mike. Yeah, yeah, your birthday oh, they do. I can't glasses. see with yeah. our oh, camera. Can't I can't see. see. Oh, no, can't I can't see this? Uh, no, a, we have a terrible... There, I have the worst camera in the world it, for, for, for seeing. Mike, our, camera, a, our camera for the podcast with these is state-of-the-art. I brought the you camera a, the, Mike, There I, you go. I brought Look you a at cake. That. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, yeah. that is beautiful. Happy birthday. Yeah, 90. Oh, it's got your age on it. 90 years old. Oh, oh my you, God, you that remember. No. <laughs> that must be. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Angie. So sorry about there that. You go. Yeah. So yeah. sorry. Uh, right. um, Angie, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, this is exciting. This is, uh, yes. you brought me a cake. You found the time. I don't know to to bake. I know. Yes, with with Safeway. Wow, this is so. Oh my god. Nothing says I love you like sheet cake. So. Oh, that's delightful. Um, And uh, share it with the boys over there. That's uh, that's awesome. And that's very nice. It is thoughtful. Mike uh, and everybody reached out. All my coworkers reached out to me this weekend. Maddie even reached out. Maddie reached out. Wow. Yeah, Maddie reached out. Pony? Yeah. yeah. And she hates uh, Pony I reached totally out. Did. Pony reached out. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. Non-communicative yeah. Pony? That's amazing. Uh, Michael McIntosh called no. me. Uh, he no. Called he didn't you? lie about oh. that. No, he didn't do that. No. He's not a big talker. Did he talker. text you at least? No. Uh, 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 no. Did no. he hide in the bushes outside your house? <laughs> yeah, he did. No. Who gave you the uh, best <laughs> greeting out of your coworkers? Um, well, I hate to blow smoke up your ass, Oscar, but uh, you know, I got a call from you. I got an actual oh. phone call from you, so oh, that was weird. that was Why that was nice. Why are you so nice soft me. all the time? You just you need to tighten up. <laughs> well, I'm let, soft. Let me, Why would you say that? Look, because I'm sweet me, uh, and nice. You're like sweet John Juan. Yeah. <laughs> You're like let John Juan of Podcast Village. My favorite exchange, and and it wasn't the best, but it was yes. my favorite, was yes. with uh, with Maddie uh, Saturday afternoon, three forty-five. Maddie writes, "Happy birthday, Mike." I said, "Thanks, Maddie." I really, I really appreciate you reaching out to the elderly. And then Maddie's <laughs> response was, "I do what I can." <laughs> that's funny. which is that's just simple, that's and, and that's that why Maddie funny. works here. That well, is funny. And I, I like that. But it was, uh, it was nice. It was a very, very nice birthday weekend, and uh, you know we enjoyed uh, ourselves. And uh, I uh, should I get it out of the way, Oscar? What I what I previewed Cause it, cause with you? Because this is, yeah. um, th- this is. Angie, big- I want you to know before I start this, I'm not a monster. I'm not a monster. I'm a nice person. I'm a ni- I love my family. 
I love uh, what my family means to me. Uh, the 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 greatest <laughs> the greatest experience that I had. Oh my God. Was my family uh, being with me? That was a uh, and everybody that meant anything to me and my family was here. My both my all three of my children were under the same roof, awesome. which is. Uh, that's when I am truly the happiest person in the world. And so uh, we got done taping our show on Thursday. And uh, I unfortunately got, uh, I get migraines up here for some reason. I still don't know why. Maybe it's the big one. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, uh, I, I, my, my daughter, so I, I was, I was t- having a lie down like in the middle of the day. And my wife had ducked out and gone to the airport and picked up my, my oldest daughter, Catherine. And brought her in, and uh, of course I woke up at that point. I'm like, "Oh my God, you're here!" Yeah. It was just a great surprise. Then uh, that night we're we're hanging out, and Friday uh, on Saturday morning, uh, I guess they they they've been sneaking around behind my back all weekend long. And Saturday morning, all three of my kids came in, and I didn't know that my my daughter Elizabeth had flown in the night before. They had made me go to uh, up to bed around 10.30 to say, we're doing stuff down here. You go to bed. Do not come out. That's it. Well, I didn't realize they were leaving the house, and they were going to pick up my daughter at the airport. So Saturday morning, the day of my birthday, all three of my kids came in wow. and sang oh, happy birthday to me, which is just about as good priceless. as it gets. It's spectacular. Yeah, that's it's great. priceless. There's nothing better. And uh, ca- and Carla leaned over to me, gave me a kiss, and said, uh, "These, uh, this is your birthday present. I brought them both, both in for you. Uh, that's fantastic. So then the, the family was here. I'm not a monster. Not a, I'm monster. Not a monster. This is what I we said must this to underscore. Oscar. Oscar's the only one that got the the real uh, truth. <laughs> he really because because Oscar knows how much of a monster I am, and so. But Mike, you're not. But I am. I I, I, I cannot change who I am. I no. cannot change uh, <laughs> my level of selfishness. I can't. I, I, I'm a, to do this job, to do this job for you as long as I've done it, of a you have narcissist. to be a, yeah. you have to be a narcissist. You have to be a little bit of a child. Yes, yeah. you have to be a little bit of a kid. And so I don't get me wrong. I, the greatest thing in the world, if you'd ask me, what do you want more than anything? I want my kids mm-hmm. here. That was all that that mattered. Then after that, that, that you know, wonderful experience dies down a little bit. I, I was like, okay. And uh, then you know, everybody on their birthday, especially a milestone birthday, would like to have. You know, a, some paper with with wrapping and, sure. and open something up. Yeah. And I, you know, I I said I said how was your birthday? I said it was great. I said I'm just still waiting for you know the 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 opener, you know, the, <laughs> the, the the little the little opener. You know, and uh, I'm sorry, but I was and I'm yeah. still I might be still a little bit I, now. And I alluded to that very briefly uh, with my wife, but then she was you know she was going to go full nuclear on okay. me with that. You said you out. Oh, dare you you bet <laughs> and I, so I, I turned away from it but then oscar called and said how was your birthday i said it's good the whole family came in they said i didn't get anything that's it i'm sorry but i mean that's that, oh that that's what i did no i'm sorry I'm so, i know yeah yes i'm a monster i'm admitting it I... I admit it here now i got wonderful gifts like gift certificates from certain listeners that they, they know who they are yes, i communicated yes, with yes, them personally yes. who are phenomenal who are fantastic but the the idea of uh i am still that little boy that wants the present under the tree. Sure. I'm still that little boy that wants the ribbon and wants to open up the the the, the, the golf club or something like it's, that. I heard it in your uh, voice. We spoke this morning on the phone, and I heard it in your voice. I said, it was so great that your daughters were there. And you said, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no. I didn't, it was great that my daughter was here, and we'll talk daughters, about her. Yeah, plural. The, well, it was daughters. great that, that Elizabeth was here and Catherine was here on her water fast it was great that she was here that it was it was fantastic and everybody and then a wonderful party at my sister's place See? up here Look at which that. was fan, was spectacular and my sister's uh children gave me a gift the, the my niece's children uh her daughter amelia gave me a beautiful uh pot for a plant with sea glass oh, beautiful that she That's made nice. herself which is downstairs, which is beautiful. That my my uh, my brother in law gave me a gag gift, which was hysterical. Which was a picture that my parents, God rest their souls, hung up in our childhood home of their dog. And when <laughs> when I moved out, they replaced my picture on the wall with the dog's picture. Oh, that's and, great! And Paul wrote me a letter about it. it. Was I I laughed my ass off. It was fantastic. My 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 niece and her husband gave me a uh, a lovely book, uh, a main book up here. 
and then uh, he scored me some tickets for Red Sox uh, tickets oh for, my, for my, God. my golf buddies at the end of the month. It That's was great. It was great. So that the partially side, the partially Chris side, <laughs> stepped up, and and then and my daughters were, were here, and they and 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 Carla was here, and they gave me lovely cards. Cards so are great. It was, it was wonderful. It was fantastic. Do you fantastic? Uh, so I'm a monster, and I'm not playing. But I say, I share my innermost beliefs with Oscar. You know, just the 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 the, the one. The, the, I I'm sorry about this, and I'm sorry. I wanted a thing. <laughs> what did you want? What thing? Great I don't question. know, Angie. Great I wanted a question. thing. Oh, I, I, I wanted I a thing. He wanted, and I know I'm a prick for this. I know I know that there are people out there going, "You incredible soulless prick." I'm sorry. That's it. That's it. But by the way, it didn't ruin my birthday. My Good. birthday was spectacular. Good. Good. But my there be- was a cloud. It, it, because it peaks been to have there was one little cloud <laughs> that followed you around. Yeah, Mike, you and know I don't what? have my backdrop in it yet. It's like Oscar, Ash Wednesday, Mike. It. I don't have my fucking backdrop like, yet. It's like Ash Wednesday. I have Wednesday. an update. <laughs> oh, good. We'll talk off what? air. And I have yeah, an update is on that a backdrop. garbage bag behind him? No, yes, no. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. <laughs> and Aunt Ms. Goff is here, <laughs> and I'm doing, a, I'm, doing a, I'm doing a show in front of a bed sheet. <laughs> <laughs> From the dollar store, Six, because they don't have it. Count. Because, uh, 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 it's ridiculous. <laughs> 600 uh, Michael thread count. Logo. You can see through the sheet, is what yeah. you're saying. It's, it's like burlap. It's like a burlap uh, right. sheet. Le- so yes. I got off the phone I'm with sorry. you. I'm sorry. I'm so... This is the place where I think and, I'm totally honest, and I know I don't come and off And Shannon well. says, what's wrong? And Because she could tell that I had a, a bit of a call with you. Right. And I said, uh, Mike's not happy about his birthday. And then no, no. she said... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't say that. Please don't say that. Just don't put it that way. No, uh, this, that'll be used against me. This I actually she's this, listening. I know she's probably listening okay. right now. She's probably she's out there with my. Don Gatto is not happy about his birthday. Yeah, Don Gatto yeah. was, by the way, yeah, Don yeah, Gatto yeah. was a Don Gatto was a fifteen at the okay, birthday. He was. Party. Don yeah. Gatto performed both Puff the Magic Dragon and Senor Don Gatto. Oh wow! At the Killed? top of his lungs at wow. the family dinner. And I was sitting there going, oh, my boy. Wow. My boy. He's a performer. I mean, a he true was, oh, Joan Crawford phenomenal. moment. <laughs> phenomenal. It was, it, was, it, it was not a Joan Crawford moment. <laughs> but so, I don't, do you understand? I, this is my problem. This is, this you is probably embarrassing. Ask Angie from a, a, a woman's perspective right. and a colleague's perspective. I know what she thinks. I see her face. I can see her. Even with that bad camera, I can see her face. You know, Ooh. I know. It's, it's, it, it's monstrous, isn't it? Right. Yeah, but I mean that's that's a that's a nice gift. I'm I'm pretty bad. I don't even do cards sometimes. Yeah. yeah so okay. all right. Yeah, okay. I, I just yeah. I don't know. And the card I, was I fantastic. Like that, that's what do you like get your husband? Out. What do you get your husband? I can't say that here. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Thanks for that moment. You know what? After all these years, God bless you. You still give us that kind of moment. It's the you easy- still give us that kind of moment, which, by the way, that sets me for the whole day. I will be skipping think, through my day after just that. Just think comment. like eighth grade. I mean, it's it's the easiest thing okay. to give. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. like, sure. Like what? You, what? Somebody? Uh, uh, somebody would want him through. Can I tell? Can I show you? That? Yes. Uh-huh. Hold on. Okay. My my wife made me. A homemade card. It's right in back of me. I'm not going to go grab it right now. Right. Oh Turning God. 60 is nothing to Snickers about, and she puts a Snickers candy bar. She got it on. She made it on Pinterest. That's fun. Uh, your mind will play Twix on you, and it's all candy bars. Well, that's good. Aww. That's so cute. Well, she's she's what you isn't want. that phenomenal? Yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. That, what did I just want? Candy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Let, let, I, I said to Shannon. I said yes. Uh, somebody. By the ma- way, I, I have a feeling. I, I just. I'm so embarrassed right now. You shouldn't so, be, I'm Mike. You shouldn't no, be. I don't feel good about myself. You're helping a lot of men out that are going through the same thing, or will. And this is really foreshadowing for my wife. Mm-hmm. And by uh, the way, when Angie said that about the the gift for yeah, her husband, yeah, that's a didn't we all gift. have like a that moment? Yeah. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Yeah. Sure. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. where we all went. Yeah. Angie, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's, that's what I was talking thing. about. Okay. Go, okay. All right. Good. good. I wanted to make double sure. You know what? Start the show, Rob. We can start the goddamn. Show. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. You can listen to the Mike O'Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. Stay tuned. We're not standing entertainment program. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. We're on the entertainment capital of the world. Words are just like humans. Might as well be as one with the other. Sometimes they mean what they say. Sometimes they don't. You know. Give me an example. Words. Paperclip? You've never seen a paperclip, have you? They're made of metal. They're metal clips. <laughs> you can use them on paper. Pay phone? They don't pay. They get paid. 
Where's the get paid phone? That's what I want. Fire department? What a ridiculous name. You'd think they started them. Mm -hmm. They put them out. They ought to be the extinguishing department. We don't call the police the crime department, do we? How about a civil war? Can you imagine a war being civil? <laughs> refinish? What? I'm refinishing the table. <laughs> don't you have to restart? <laughs> Here's a phrase. Occasional irregularity. <laughs> now, what other kind of irregularity can there be? It's not occasional, it wouldn't be irregular. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. We are live from the Podcast Village Studios in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. For our long-timers, thank you so much for your support every single day. If you are new, sit back, relax, and enjoy. From Rutgersville, Virginia, to Lyman, New Hampshire. From Clarion, Pennsylvania, to... Atascadero, California? Yes! Did I get it right the first time? I think time? you did, yes. From Maitland, Florida to Reardon, Washington. From Medical Lake, Washington State uh, to... Oh, I got two Washingtons in a row. To Buenos Aires, Argentina. The Mike O'Mara Show is on now. I'm brought to you by Hims. Here is a fact. 66% of men lose their hair by age 35. And by the time you notice, it's too late. The solution? For Hims.com. A one-stop shop. For hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. 4 connects you with real doctors and medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. Real prescriptions backed by science, no nonsense. Just answer a few questions. The doctor reviews it, and the products are shipped directly to your door. It's that easy. I hate doctor's offices, so I love 4 Remember, it's easier to keep the hair you have than to replace the hair you've lost. So act now. Order now. Our listeners can get started with Hims Complete Hair Kit for just five bucks today while supplies last and subject to doctor's approval. See website for full details and safety information. This would cost you hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. Go to forhims.com slash TMOS. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash TMOS. Don't wait. Forhims.com slash TMOS. And uh, thank you. We're there patronage we appreciate it uh we are here with angie goff let me give you the uh, vitals on angie she will be uh actually the podcast started last friday oh my goff podcast uh right here at podcast village absolutely right? mike 100 percent. and three episodes ready for your binge listening in uh including the uh real housewife of uh potomac uh giselle bryant and skins quarterback alex smith available on youtube and apple podcasts uh she's returning to channel five on july 8th at 4 p.m eastern co-anchoring the station's 4 p.m newscast the new 4 p.m newscast mm -hmm. with blake mccoy and she will serve as co-host of like it or not weeknights at 7 p.m you like that I, I, what, what is like? Tell me what like it or not is. Uh, <laughs> what is? I was mean, expecting like, a little bit more. <laughs> like it or not? <laughs> like it or not? How about uh, a crusty laugh for like it or not? Like it or not? <laughs> <laughs> You're also um, on Twitter and Instagram yeah. and all that, and Facebook and all that, that stuff. I mean, I like it. I have no idea what it means. I don't know what it what it means. Is well, it a game show? Well, we, it sounds like it. It, it says mm -hmm. it's actually. I'm hosting it tonight. You can watch it online. So I, I know we're based out of D.C., but if you are on uh, Fox's website, Fox 5's website, it's streamed. But uh, like it or not, basically we take buzzworthy stories of the day or bizarre stories, and we do a roundtable whether or not we like it, and it gives us a chance to. Give a little bit more opinion, you know, in the news world. Yeah. yeah, in the news world, we're kind of trained to kind of stay down the line. And um, and after my little hiatus, I decided if I were to come back to news, I'd have to be able to be a little bit more me and a little bit more authentic, as they say. Well, that's, uh, so, I, mean, um, I mean, in all seriousness, you are someone who has always done well. Uh, on any show you go on, uh, as far as you know, you, you you can handle that, and there there are anchors that do do that, and others that that don't. And you can come into this environment. You like it. You've always enjoyed doing this kind of radio, and so I think that's how many people are going to be uh, in the roundtable situation. Uh, there's four total. So there's two. There's going to be three main hosts. So there's three of us, and then there's the fourth chair where they invite somebody and they're a surprise guest. 
and uh, they walk through the door. It is kind of like a game show. The door opens up and they come out. Ooh, maybe. Ooh. 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 Ah. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> so thirty minute, thirty minute format, or is a yeah, thirty an minute hour? format, and um, so cool. I and love it's actually, something it's new. It's really fun. It's really fun. It's different. It's doing really well. Um, yeah, and then the four p.m. show. We're gonna see how that's going. We're gonna do rehearsals all this week, and then kick it off when I get back from the beach on July eighth. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it because it's a chance for me to be able to do all the social media stuff. And You were, and, you were recently the, the fourth chair on Like It or Not. I, saw I you was, come back yeah. You were the surprise guest. To my guest. surprise, Yes, too. to your surprise. How do you work? How is it working with that crowd? Do you like the guys on the show? Yeah, so yeah. far. I, I mean, that's like the first time I met them. Uh-huh. Oh, really? On air? Yeah, I, oh, yeah, that's fun. I, I went in to shoot some promos, and they were like, oh, you want to do the show tonight? So um, <laughs> why not? So do you ever get heavy uh, on it? I mean, do you ever get a heavy story, or is it pretty light as far as, uh, or yeah. do you just do deep dives on subjects that not, aren't necessarily traditional news subjects? It's a little bit of both. I mean, okay. they started off with politics, from what I understand, and then mm-hmm. that kind of just went sideways. And so they, they don't do so much politics, because as you can imagine, I mean, I think we have enough of that on cable news. And so they're more likely right. to do the, the pizza rat? Yeah, the pizza rat, mm-hmm. the um, alligator gender reveal, <laughs> <laughs> real hard-hitting stuff. <laughs> And, but it's fun. But, I mean, especially also, if, you know. The things that are relevant that are in the news, things like deep fakes, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Zuckerberg, social media, mm-hmm. things that everyone's talking about and has an opinion on. But say in a regular newscast, you're just reporting it. And, and you know that there's context that you want to add to it, sure. but you kind of feel like you have to hold it back. And they really encourage us just to go all out. And, and to be quite honest with you, I've done the show a couple times and it's been a real gear shift for me because you're so used to having that filter that I've actually been a little reserved where, you know, you guys know how I am yes. real, yeah. in real life, yes. right? Yes. So um, so I think it's gonna there's going to be a learning curve there, but I'm looking forward to it. You know, when you did, uh, it just seems like a, uh, the, the, I seem to just remember you being one of the first where you were anchoring, uh, and I believe I would watch it on uh, when you would do the, the weekends on NBC, and you would be, uh, you would have your computer there, and you would be communicating online with people as you were, I always thought, you know, if I was ever in a TV anchor situation, I would be so concerned about screwing up and, and you know, not seeing my prompter, not going to the right camera. And there you are anchoring the morning news and you're communicating mm-hmm. in between with people online. And I've always I don't think I've had you on since uh, that 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 happened. I wanted to ask you, how yeah. did that whole thing get started when and, and I, I know you were always very social media aware uh, with your brand, even before maybe they were telling you, you had to, it had to be before the TV stations came to you because they don't come up with those ideas. Uh, and you were doing that for a very, very long time. When did that all get started with you? Yeah, that was back when I was at uh, WUSA, I think in oh, 2008. Nine. It was probably over, yeah, a decade ago. And but the live long, stream long time component ago. probably came when you were at four. No, no? actually, it started. I, I would carry, I have pictures of carrying around like a six pound laptop. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it was like, wow. I would dial up to you stream. (laughs) I'd be like waiting, waiting. Oh, there's yeah, one viewer, two viewer. That is awesome. And then, um, but what was weird is, is I mean, people made fun of it. They were like, nobody wants to see behind the scenes. You're talking to people. This is weird. And for me, it was spectacular. (laughs) It was an outlet because when I was working at the CBS station here, I was hired to do traffic. And because of the union rules and everything, even though I came from a news background until I was able to break out of the traffic contract, I couldn't I can even read a news voiceover on the air Mm -hmm. without getting in trouble. Wow. So for me, I was like, well, here's a loophole. It's called the Internet. And so that's when I started using the Internet to cultivate this community and to really start telling my own story. Stories, and then taking viewer generated content and through social media and turning it into my own little stories that they would put on the air because that was my only way that I could create content and not feel like I was in the straight wow. jacket. I didn't know that. And I didn't so, know that's where um, came from. so that's actually where it came from. And I remember, and I tell the story when I was doing traffic and I realized, wow, this thing called Twitter is fast. It's in real time. It's faster <laughs> than our website. And so <laughs> I started mentioning that on the air and I'd say, follow me on Twitter. I'm doing these updates in real time on your traffic. This is before 
before WTOP traffic had any type of traffic, you know, anyone. And I got called into the office by the news director and kind of got a tongue lashing in a nice way for mentioning another website on our air instead of sh- you know, sending everybody to our news site. And I was sitting there banging my head against the brick, basically, again, being like, no, but don't you see? And and it just it was always a constant I always felt like I was in constant explanation. I mean, even with the podcast thing. I mean, that's why I, I, I walked away most recently because mm-hmm. there's always this feeling, I think, for some people in this business to evolve and right. to to do the next thing. And, and sometimes you just have to take a risk in something you believe in. And so even though I knew at the time that people were, were mocking and making fun of the, the behind the scenes thing and saw no value in it, in the back of my mind, I really said, this is going to go somewhere like we can't ignore it. And this is going to be a part of our the fabric of you know what we do. And so people still to this day are like, oh, social media is one thing and TV is one thing. But I really think that everybody in some capacity is connected online and it, it's really become a part of our lives. And so I no longer really separate that. And I guess I never really saw it as a separation. And so that's why I've been able to kind of just, you know, move onward with what I believe in. But but yeah, and, and moving over to four, I, I had the opportunity to have my own show. You know, I got back into news. And so right. literally I would just host it from from my phone. But it is like producing a second show. Right. And, I, yep. and, and I don't think that every newscaster should be doing Facebook Live. Well, just, I don't know how you do it. I really, um, I mean, I would look at that and I, I would I don't know if I'd be able to pull that off because I, but I found it as just a consumer to be riveting i yeah. thought it was just so cool to see and for people that are interested in people anyone that would tell you people wouldn't be interested in that is out of their minds it's it's, it's Mike, completely you've been taking in, you, you've been in broadcasting yeah. longer than any of us do you find it so since zen- the 1800s rob did i, did I mention i'm 60 <laughs> i know it came i'm up. 90 years old today there we go <laughs> don't yes, you find it weird that station management wouldn't be forward thinking <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like, well, Oscar and I would tell you about as far as this uh, thing, you know, as yeah. far as digital, and uh, they, you know, they're still catching up. Oh, they yeah. still oh, don't yeah. know how to do it. They still well, don't really know also, how to get it out there. And, and Angel, I'll let you tell your story and, and time wise, how much time we have left in this break? We're up. All the time you need. Okay, um, t- tell them what how you had to fight for your podcast on your own. To mm-hmm. make sure this happened, to walk away, to, to actually build what you built. Because, Mike, we don't have that many people come to you in life and say, I'm walking away for, for, so I can build this, and then I'll see where the chips lie after the fact. Yeah, right. I right. think that mm-hmm. it, it just got to the point where trying to explain your ideas and trying to convince people and trying to get people to trust you in what you believe, that's really hard in any corporate any environment, corporate yeah. environment that you're in. It, it doesn't matter what call letters or what station it is. And it really because it's kind of seen as a disruption in a sense because they have the day-to-day stuff that they need to hit and everything is going to be a sideshow. And I I knew that I did not want it to be a sideshow or a side hustle. Like this was something, this was going to be an outlet where I could be myself. I could try to do interviews. We could share content. We could create more content, which is what we want, right? And so instead of just having to ask and go through all the red tape that's involved with that, I didn't want to go through. I mean, I'm exhausted. I've been doing this for 10 years. You know, mm-hmm. finally, when, when everybody comes around to social media and, and accepting that person, posting personal things actually results in people communicating and relating to you more. I mean, there was a time where I was called into the office. I'm not going to say which station it is. And I was told, you know, stop posting about your personal life and your family and this and that. And and I felt a little weird about it. And then a, fast forward a year later and everybody's being pushed to, oh, show more about yourself. Yeah. Show da da da. No, and I'm like, absolutely. okay, where were you a year ago exactly. when I, I was being shamed and, and whatnot? And so I just, I, I was like, I'm not going through that again. And, and so after talking to a supportive husband who's just said, look, if you got to do this, you're not happy. All I knew is that I was not comfortable staying where I was, that I was not going to be happy. And and I needed that time to throw myself into the podcast and create something. And I really believed if I created something that was great, that Genuine. my friends would want to watch, that was real, then other people would take notice. I almost wanted to create the podcast. I mean, I trust me, like I became a free agent, what, in April? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And but I left the job in December and it drew you met my agent. 
Yes. Jerry Maguire. <laughs> He's already called me once. He yeah, saw. Like, out did. of central casting. I'm like, I got guy. a job, Jerry. Stop from calling New York. me. From You're New York. You're going to get paid. You're going to get paid. And out of so. central <laughs> casting, this guy's in Charlie Bernie's <laughs> office. Yeah. And I'm using Charlie Bernie's office <laughs> because it's a nicer office. I know. You and, were so faking. Yeah, and I was like, I'm going to sit in Charlie's <laughs> seat because he's not here at the moment. And I'm going to sit in front of Angie. And mind you, there's I have nothing to do with this uh, agent-client relationship. I just had to explain to her agent what this podcast was and okay. what we were building. That's it. all it was. And, it's, and yeah. you're good at it, though. I mean, you yeah. brought me into this thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're, you, know, you know how this game works, and nobody has been on the cutting edge of it more and, and knows how to like lay it out there, what it does for you. How you get it done and all that. Then Oscar, I'm sure he did a great job when he uh, when yeah, he spoke no, to Jerry. No, he was great. He he did. He said, Jerry, baby, this is Oscar, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I ease some tensions. You That's did. You did. Yes. You did. You evened it out. And and the thing is, is I think when people, it's the same thing. They hear podcasts and they think that I'm like my mother's in Chin's basement. Right. Which, by the way, Mike, you oh, buried the I lead. Was gonna get to you Chin. buried I the was lead. Get, I was gonna get to Chin. I knew I had Alex Smith and a Real Housewife, but Chin was on the first podcast. So, yes. I, Oh, my yeah, God. I didn't know that. Rob, you should have told me that. Chin I didn't know that Chim star. was on the first one. Some surprises for you. For oh, you oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I have to ask. All right. Well, you, you brought sorry. it up, so okay. now you've stopped the interview okay. call. No. <laughs> because I have to ask you about Chim. All right. Um, uh, you know, it's, are we ever talking about Chim? That's later, Angie's mom. You know, it's okay. You can go okay, now. Go okay, now. Go okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what do you want to know about Chin? Is Chin still gambling compulsively? Well... Well, she has been relegated to the iPad, to iPad gambling. You, like she doesn't go to the like Charlestown, Charlestown anymore. No, I mean, she special occasions. Yeah. Special did she occasions. ever go to the new one, the uh, the one over at uh, MGM? Oh, the MGM. Did she, ever yeah. uh, she did, but then she <laughs> left when she realized she could not smoke inside. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> Angie! Angie's mom Mike, has Mike, been part of her world I, 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 uh, on, online for a Chin long time. It's is on the first three episodes. She's on the first episode, and it's and great. I, I run it's outside so great. because, as I would for your parents or anybody's parents, I run outside to make sure that they're set with parking. Her parents are coming into town, and I open the passenger door, and there is Chin online gambling yes. on an iPad <laughs> in, in in the passenger seat and she looks at me like I'm a stranger trying to get in an Uber yeah. I'm like Chin we haven't met I'm Oscar I'm here to show you where the studios are and she's like hold on a sec and her, her finger goes straight to the iPad yep. for her next spin yep. <laughs> well, she has least... burned through three iPads <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I'm like, Dad, oh you're spending God. more money on iPads than you would if you just let her go to Charlestown yeah, go ahead, let her every go. other let weekend. Her go. Oh, um, God. Uh, well, you got to check it out. Uh, Oscar, yeah. now tell me, how, how often are we going to have uh, Oh My Go Off? How, how, how often is that? Uh, so Angie, on? right now, um, after the sh production today, the, uh, the, the Michael Mara show, she'll be recording two more episodes. So we're looking at a weekly basis at this point. Know this, Mike. Uh, she launched her show, just the Alex Smith episode has over... A, I guess as of yesterday, sixteen thousand views, um, and for then that's just for the YouTube channel. Right. Uh, we're talking about uh, multiple thousands more on the Apple Podcasts. If you're out there and you're listening to uh, our voices, please subscribe and give Angie a five star review on Apple Podcasts. It's Oh My Goff Show. You search for that, it'll come right up. Right. But more importantly, um, for you, Angie, the idea that she's pushed Mike, our production team to another, I guess, level. The next level, is, yeah. The next level is, 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 is wild because Angie says, I want to do this. And imagine this, Mike. Uh, you're like, oh, I want to do uh, Comedians in Cards getting coffee type of situation. Mm -hmm. And she has a segment where where you'll see the Real Housewives of Potomac um, and you'll see Angie driving in what is, uh, I think, the funniest vehicle for the segment uh -huh. uh, and most adaptive. What you don't know is that Oscar Santana is in the back Hunkered down. <laughs> running the audio as Angie, who we found out can't drive, is driving the streets <laughs> of DC. I am Asian. <laughs> and the whole thing is being recorded. So I think everybody's going to enjoy all these episodes. And to Angie's credit, as you open it up, a lot of that footage is her footage from her own page, her own Instagram page. Yeah. So it's pretty awesome. pretty impressive how it comes to And I'm sure you saw the production value, Mike, on your end. It's uh, phenomenal. And, uh, and really, uh, it's just great that you're associated with uh, everybody over at Podcast Village. It's, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, marriage from the Mike O'Mara show to this organization here. And I'm so glad you're a part of it. And I think you're going to love it as much as I do, no, I uh, do. being associated with these guys. They're, they're awesome. And congratulations on uh, your return to TV in D.C. Mm -hmm. Even though yes. I'm not up there anymore, it's fantastic. 
and uh, and everything and can, can continue. Uh, is your husband still living uh, in Alaska while you're yes. uh, up here? He's in, actually uh, he's actually in Florida for two weeks. <laughs> oh, oh nice. I wish I wasn't in Maine. Playing That's, golf. Uh, playing golf. Oh, we have to play golf. That's my thing. Yeah, yeah I like that. That's right. Uh, uh, Angie, always a pleasure. And do not, you know, you're down the hall when you come in here, so come by. You can pop in anytime, oh, anywhere. That. Open door. We'll appreciate that. that. Nice. Angie Goff, and uh, wow. And uh, please give my very best to Chin. And I love those glasses. Happy birthday. They're for to you. Yay, thank Mike. you so much. You. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Angie. We'll take a break. We will come back with more fun and thrills on the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. My name is Matthew Ponyboy Bloom, and I approve this message. In this era of fake news, who is our best, most trusted source of entertainment? Clearly not Mike O'Mara. Did you know that Mr. O'Mara voted to defund his interns? He works them for free. Disgusting. Also, the other day, Mike didn't wish Oscar's dog happy birthday. Does Mr. O'Mara believe dogs don't deserve love on their birthdays? I think so. Artless, avid golfer, Floridian. Just a few words to describe the monster behind the mic. Let Pony, a proven patriot, lead your mornings right. Sign up for the bonus show to give Pony the spotlight he rightfully deserves. This grassroots movement needs your support. Together, we can dethrone the host with the most medical problems. This ad was paid in part by the OFIC, Organization for Intern Compensation. I'm still Matthew Bloom, and I still approve this message. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Cornerstone. Summertime, the temperatures are rising, but conversely, mortgage rates are falling. Down. That means it's a perfect time to call Cornerstone First Financial. Yes, low rates, baby, and Cornerstone can save you big bucks. So whether you're buying a house or refinancing or just want to get a little cash in hand to make it a great summer, you've got to act right now. When? What? Uh, While uh, the market is still on your side, call Cornerstone. Do it. Here's the best part. The folks at Cornerstone First Financial are TMOS listeners just like you. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> I know you wanted it like that. <laughs> Name's Norm. <laughs> just like you. Don't, you. I don't know why I love that so much. Uh, <laughs> if you don't understand uh, the intricacies of high finance, uh, no sweat, they do, and they will take care of you. Trust the friends of TMOS. Sooner or later, inflationary pressure will push these rates back up to realistic levels, so this won't last. Act now. Cornerstone is licensed in California, Maryland, Virginia, D.C., Georgia, Florida, and Colorado. Click their banner on our website. Visit cornerstonefirst.com or call them at 866-625-1221. That, uh, that's 866-625-1221. Cornerstone First Financial. Personal attention from application to closing Great to have Angie. It's Isn't been a long great? time since we've had Angie in studio, and uh, she's uh, she's God, just a go getter. Yep. I mean, amazing, amazing effort, and uh, cutting edge, and wonderful, and uh, it's uh, delightful. Well, this is your third segment. This is what you wanted. Well, so Mike, that's this is a little I birthday treat her for you. Out of here, and what's this that? Is, this is your birthday treat for your 60th birthday. All right. This is a mystery guest. Okay. And we will How are we have doing him, it? We will have him enter and sign in. I've already given All you right. a clue. It's a man. Oh. He will okay. enter and sign in, and then I will afford you clues. You can jump in at any time. Is with he going to walk in, or is he going to no, be he's on the be phone? No, he's, he's on the phone. Mystery <clears throat> guest, are you there? All right. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Live from Los Angeles, and just two short blocks away from Television City in Hollywood. Good morning, Oscar. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, TMOS audience. And, Mike, happy birthday to you. I'm so pleased to be part of this special birthday. The time now in Los Angeles is 648, Rob. I know it is. Thank you very much for uh, availing your schedule to us, mystery guest. Mike, do you have a guess at this point as to who the mystery guest is? All right, please, go. Patton Oswalt. Is not Patton Oswalt. Well, it it sounded almost. That's (laughs) one down and nine to go. All right. Nine to go. Here is your Uh, first clue. All right. And you you can guess at any time. Okay. You have had a career rich with partners. Yeah. You partnered with me, with Oscar, with Kirk McEwen, Don Geronimo, but this man was perhaps your first partner in entertainment. My first partner in entertainment. I, I, I like. I mean, I'm thinking back in terms of summer this stock. Is a, this is a this is a poll of all polls. If if you've done this, is this John? Is this John Bernie? Birthday. It is John Bernie, yes! It's John oh Bernie calling God. from Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my Charlie's God. Charlie's brother. Close up this of Mike, is, oh, Close up this, of Mike. 
This is really, this is huge. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. This is, this is the man we never have at the reunions. Everybody, this is, this is, the, this is the human being whose, whose <laughs> name is on everybody's tongue at our reunions. This is That's very this kind. Is, the, John, it's the truth. It's the well, truth. It's very I am. Kind. But, this but, is, but uh, Rob, yeah. Rob, just read a couple of these accomplishments because, Mike, I think, I believe the first time you ever received a standing ovation, I was standing next to you. Yeah, I actually have. He, he prepared a That's small That's probably list. true. That's but, but yeah. Just before you read this, Rob, I have to say, I was up here in Maine and I was talking to someone, I don't know who I was telling the story about, about Hilton Catterley. And yeah. how I I did that? Did I did I, did I tell that t- story told, on the show? You've told it on the show before. Yes, absolutely. And that's Where one of the John, moments. You and then up. John wrote. And then John wrote an article in the school newspaper. How he I was doing an impression of the local weatherman, and John arranged, unbeknownst to me, to have him come out behind me while I was doing this impression, and it was this amazing burn. And then John <laughs> wrote an article about how he burned me. And uh, yeah, we we were we hosted Newsline together that's on awesome. the. Uh, High school stage for current events. This is a big. This is a big person in my what life. What you this never is, mentioned to me. Mike. I'm gobsmacked. I am absolutely Mike, gobsmacked. Mike, none of none of this is on your Wikipedia page, and I think we should make those. <laughs> <laughs> they still got it. I they really still do. Still got. It. I am so John. I am. Oh my God! This is fantastic. I don't believe you yeah, ever told us, Mike, incredible. that you played Oscar to his Felix Ooh, in the Odd right. Couple. Oh, that's right. That's right. That. We did that. We did that. We did uh, what, Gladys we did, Knight in the Pips. Gladys, Gladys Knight, Knight in the, the Pips. Pips. We did a Monty Python sketch where you died like for 15 minutes on stage. That's right. Uh, who's where you on did first? the who's, who's on, on first? first? Oh, we did, no. we did who's on first? Oh, wow. this was it. And John, John at the at the Glastonbury High School was our class president mm-hmm. as well. And uh, you know, the thing that I remember more than anything is every. Do we do it every Friday? Was that one, or do we do it every day? Yeah, the, uh, news they, line. They allowed, they allowed us to do it every Friday over yeah, the yeah. intercom. Yeah, um, over the over the intercom. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And it was great, great fun. Oh but, wow, Mike! I've I've been listening now for over a year, and you, you know, you you tell these stories, and I'm like, gosh, I've got to figure a way to get in here. And oh, reflecting so reflecting most on your mother, Mary, who I loved, and I know. Oh, wow. You know, my parents loved you. You love my parents. This Absolutely. Is a, this this oh. is a great way to say happy birthday, Mike. Thank you. Oh my God, I John, Aww. this is fantastic. John, I'm a, I'm going to be the first one to tell you. You have to make it out to. My sister was telling me the other day, <laughs> talking about the 50th reunion. Oh God, yeah. Live, if we all live to see it, uh, <laughs> that, that you know, that, that I, Kathy's I, I actually thinking. Com- I thought we could compare our list of medications later. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Yeah. It's like you've stepped out of the. You've stepped yeah. out of history. This is amazing. You sound exactly like you used to sound. You still oh, got it. <laughs> you still got it, my boy. And you're you're. You're in L.A. and you've you've lived your whole life out in L.A., right? That's right. That's right. And um, I, you know, Las Vegas is not that far away. Ooh! So, oh, please come we to Vegas. Please, we can please, please. Friday absolutely. Oh, I would love to see you. It's been it's been ridiculously uh, a long it, time, and it uh, has. It, 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 if now, we wait another forty years, we'll both be a hundred. So let's not. Oh do that. my God! No, I am. <laughs> right. This I is such a huge deal for me, Rob. This is absolutely fantastic. Happy birthday! I Mark. mean, I mean, of you know, everybody talks about. You, you, I, you have to know this. I don't know whether you're aware of it or not, John, but everybody taught your name is mentioned by so many people when we all get together. And the last one was last year, the 40th That's anniversary, right. the 40th yeah. reunion that we had for GHS. And to be honest with you, uh, you know, I, uh, Joey Pasker, one of my, my, yeah. my other best friends, John was my best friend. Joey was, I had two best friends in high school. This is one of them. Joey was another one. And then everybody else, it's just a, it's kind of dull, John. It's kind of dull talking <laughs> to all those people. <laughs> You know, well, Mike, and, Mike yeah. this is a perfect moment. So this is this is really a perfect moment, and, and it's it's the best time to do it. You're fifty nothing. You're sixty. Happy birthday, and uh, buddy, I hope to see you soon. Oh, oh thank you, John. Sweet. Thanks thank so you, much. John, Thanks sweet. for calling in. Oh, that's awesome, John Rob, Bernie, ladies you. and gentlemen. Thank you, John. Thank President. You, oh, bravo! Thank you, and, bravo! Stay seated. Stay seated. All right. Cheers. I'll watch it on YouTube. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'll watch I'm it on YouTube. Blown away. <laughs> oh God! I wish my mom was alive to, that she'd be able to know that he called. He had a in million today. great that, things to say about your the, entire this is, family. This is the great elusive dude. This is the man nobody, everybody tried to get. I mean, this it's constant. It was like, where's John? Where he was the guy. You can hear this. You can, you know who he sounds like. Who? And, and this I, when I whenever I see. John Maloney, the stand-up uh, oh, yes. Mulaney. Yes. Yeah, Mulaney. John Mulaney. John yeah. has the exact same rhythm. The same rhythm. It's still there. It's still there the I'll way see it he on did. YouTube. He Bye. was so, <laughs> he, yeah. so great. He's so savvy still. That's the guy. And by the way, you know, it was it was a you know a that's what started me on the whole collaborative. That's deal. great. That's great. I'm so blown away by that. That is made a, my day. A, a I don't need, a, I don't email. need to open anything now. I'm, I'm fine. He That's sent me great. a vague email oh, months ago, and um, I had to call your sister to make sure he was on the level. Because oh, you I know, have to tell Kathy. Did, did Kathy know he was? Well, Kathy come knew on? he was coming on today. Yeah. Oh my. Because well, God. I mean, I told her two months ago. I'm sure it's not top of mind, but she was the oh, one. She was the uh, one but, that no, vetted him. He look. I was part. His family knew me. My family knew him. We were. Attached at the hip, and we Aww. did. We did all the the whole. Re I remember picking out the music. The show was called Newsline, and we did it every okay. Friday in front of the uh, in front of the uh, current at Glastonbury High School. The current events class, which was uh, you read Newsweek every week, and mm -hmm. you get quizzed mm -hmm. on the issues of the day. It's really terrific. Uh, Smart course for high school kids yeah. to make you aware Engaged. of the world. Yeah, I, had a teacher I think like it that was too. absolutely. It was I, I don't know if they do that nowadays in high school or not, but they should, and they should. People, uh, it, it would make people more literate about what's going on in the world around them. And then we would do the news headlines on the intercom, and it would be in front of the senior class for current events, but it would also be broadcast to the entire high school. Oh, cool! And we did that, and we were off to the side, and they. I remember picking out the music, uh, the planets. Uh, Aaron Gustav Copeland? Holst, oh, Holst. Uh, oh, yeah, my, my father's album, and it's like do, 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 this is Newsline, oh, and cool. we and we did it all the time, and then he would be uh, when we would have the non talent talent show, which is what we had at my high school, and he was the uh, you know it, when, when he mentioned uh, the Pips, and I still keep in touch with it. this is so cool, and when, you know you want to talk about what gets you going when you're when you get to an advanced stage is reconnecting with somebody from your distant distant past. There's Richie Coleman, who has reached out to me, so I still uh, maintain contact with him. There's John Bernie, and there's myself, and we were the pips to uh, to Patty, who was uh, this this wonderful African American girl who was Gladys Knight, and she had three white pips, these <laughs> suburban white kids that were in back of her, and we wore white tuxedos with the bow ties and everything, and we did the moves when she said, uh, "What's it, Dant?" Dun, dun, L.A. too much for the man. Oh, that's a Midnight, midnight train, train to Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. So we did Midnight Train to Georgia. That was one of the things we did. John was like the Johnny Carson who sat up on the set. I was the impressionist. You know, Carson. I was in. He he <laughs> duped me, much like all my other radio partners have duped me in the years. You know, and do that. It's if I sound like I'm <clears throat> blown out of my mind. Uh, that's that's just uh, that's truly. Is this special. your news that music? Is. The planets. Yeah, but it's it's yeah okay. You've got that. It's Mars, the bringer of war. Okay, I think or no or Jupiter. It might be Jupiter. Damn it, John will like this. Forty nine minutes of cut here. Yeah. Do they have the different planets there? Can you go through them? Let's find them. Let me see. But so so going on with this, it was all all of the different. Sounds like Venus. That might be Venus. All of the different. Uh, entities that we did all, all the performing entities. No, it's uh, but now you're you're throwing me. Pluto, anyways, sorry, but, I will have. Uh, but it's just that's great. That's that blo that blows me away. That is a that is a legitimate true surprise, and you don't get many of those. No. when uh, time capsule. This, so. I loved it. Wow. All right. Happiness. So that's enough of that. Oh, John Bernie. God bless you. I uh, love you, and I thank you so much for calling it. God. Dang it! <laughs> oh, wait till I talk to my sister about that. We will take a break. And uh, he's never shown up for a reunion. This is huge. For a while, people wonder whether he was alive or dead, for God's sake. You know? <laughs> yeah, awesome but you, stuff. But you get that a lot at the 40th. Oh, uh, Joey, I hope you're listening. <laughs> Joey, Joey, I hope you're listening to this. Mm -hmm. I hope you're listening to this. This is great. We'll take a break. Come back with more fun on the Michael Mara Show. Your boy, Paulie. Hi, Paulie. Technology has come a long way from the He's on another Romero vacation. Yeah. <laughs> you can listen to it on yes. iTunes and Spotify. Watch the boys on YouTube. Hang out with them on Facebook and Instagram. 
And now, they're also on Alexa. Let's check it out. Hey, Alexa, play the Mike O'Mara Show podcast. Here's the Mike O'Mara Show from TuneIn. Number 2,208, full course meal, one hour, 22 minutes. Today on the Mike O'Mara Show. Oh, my God. That's freaking <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Back to you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Polly. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Noom. Getting in shape isn't just about losing weight. It's about changing habits and feeling better about yourself in every way. That's why we love Noom. Noom is a habit-changing solution that helps you develop a new relationship with food through personalized courses. Noom knows you're human. No food is good, bad, or off limits. If you go off track, there's no shaming. Just tips to help you get back on track tomorrow. And thanks to your goal specialist and the Noom community, Community, you're never alone. My favorite part is that Noom has one of the biggest food databases av- available. It has literally everything at a glance. Food tracking made easy. I love it. Oscar loves Noom, and Carla has never looked better. You don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. Sign up for your trial today at Noom, N O O M.com slash TMOS. What do you have to lose? Visit Noom.com slash TMOS to start your trial today. That's Noom.com slash TMOS, the last weight loss program you will ever need. Thank you very much to Noom. That is officially. One of the biggest surprises I've ever gotten on any oh, show. Oh, that's great. Ever. I'm wow. so pleased. I'm so pleased. The, 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 if, I, if I'm not artic- articulating the history of this, uh, <clears throat> he was the guy in high school. He well, was you, the you guy. You said it all when you said class president. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. He was the guy. And, and with the reunions, you always have a point man where everybody, you know, you're, it, it's, it, it can be the guy like this who was, uh, John was a little bit of a guy. And just very, you know, very, very waif-like, and and mm-hmm. and he was smart and so funny. like looking in a mirror. And uh, <laughs> I was the I was I was the I was the Ed McMahon to his Johnny. I That's really awesome. was. I mean, it was. But he, uh, it, when you you know, we went to a couple. I've been to like three reunions, and it's always where's John? Where's John? Yeah. We don't know. And the and you know, way back when, one of our first ones, we were really, you know, when it, when it's still fresher, right. uh, you're saying, you know, where is he? Well, we haven't been, able, haven't been able to get in touch with him. And I was talking about him to different people. What's the deal? Why not? Blah, blah, blah. What's he doing? I think he's in real estate out there. I think that's he what is. he does. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and so I, I was just, it was constant and, and it never really diminished as soon as, as, as early as the 40th uh, reunion that we had. And then to, you know, to have that. And then as soon as you said my first partner I, I i'm like the, you know think way way back and uh because he did sound a little like Patton. yeah he you did, know? He he's, did. He's, he's sharp and uh oh god i remember going into I, i'm sorry i'm overwhelmed i am really really overwhelmed with that i just that got a is, text uh, from him mike he says please do not give mike my contact info so <laughs> <laughs> no i'm gonna I'll, I'll make sure you guys get a get hooked up today after the show well, I've had a lot of surprises this weekend, and this is uh, this is awesome. I uh, I really do it. And by the way, the only thing I love on my my uh, iPhone is the camera because I think the camera. Yes. Yeah. My oh, daughters fantastic. don't take bad pictures, but uh, that was uh, that was uh, amazing. And uh, you know, Catherine, uh, if you're listening to my voice, please just uh, see a doctor if you're not feeling well. Catherine is on a twenty day twenty day water fast. Her too. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> Wait a she second. said she's <laughs> when did this she's, start? I think she's she's halfway through it. Oh, so she fantastic. was uh, Jeez. she was not eating anything. And you know, when you come up here for a holiday weekend or or birthday weekend and it's just you celebration know, we're, we're, food. we're an eating machine. And by yeah. the way, you know, and every time I'm sitting there stuffing myself this weekend, I'd look over at you know at Catherine and, and she's like, mm, that looks really nice. I said, No, Dad, I'm over it. I'm not uh, I don't have a, it doesn't bother me to One be in front of people. One ice cube with eating. artificial sweetener. <laughs> <laughs> insane. Probably well, not. the fast really is good. is um, I think it's become so trendy now. Right. The, and I'm Ask not talking your buddy Todd Moore. Yeah, I'm not ask I'm not even talking about intermittent fasting. I'm saying fasting. You're right. fasting mm-hmm. for 7 days, you're fasting for 14. I remember when Todd got into it just like you your, fr- your all your friends sometimes get into something you're like, "Oh, maybe I'll try." Sure. Right. It was like a day, a half a day. And I said, "This is not going to happen for me." No. I'm good with this. 
I'm going to run or I'll ride the bike. There's no way well, I'm going to sit here and be Is this be before miserable. or after the bone broth nonsense? This is during the bone broth This is nonsense. during the bone yeah. broth. Okay. The bone broth nonsense. You're not <laughs> able to say nonsense, though, when okay. you're a fat guy uh, like me. All right, how about this? Let me rephrase it. Uh, strike it from the record, Pony. Was this before <laughs> or after he found out the excellence of bone broth? Because he was sustaining himself <laughs> on bone broth. That's right. <laughs> now, when you see someone lose 20 pounds in roughly, I would say, 10 days, yeah. Yeah. then you become a believer. Yeah, but well, can you I'm, do I'm it? worried about her. I'm worried about it. It's it just it freaks me out. It free. I mean, uh, uh, the concept. It's not of, usual. She looked very healthy. It didn't look like she. She looks lose fantastic. Yeah. She does have, cir- have circles under her no, eyes. No, she no. Did. And by the way, with the with with uh, you know the the 5 a.m. departures and people coming mm-hmm. in at night and traveling and all that, you would think uh, you know she was run down. She was definitely uh, a little bit run down. But she looked good. Her skin looked really good. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And, the, you know, meanwhile, you know, she goes and drops her sister off at the airport on Sunday morning and comes back with Tim Horton's donuts for me. That's a what? good girl. You're on a donut fast. Goes to the, waits for Tim Hortons to open at six o'clock so she can get donuts. I mean, and meanwhile, I'm sitting there going, uh, are there any chocolates? <laughs> so I'm starting today, not, the, not, not, no, not fasting. I'm oh. just going back to my 1,850 <laughs> calories, which, by the way, compared to hers, seems like I'm going to a buffet every, yeah, every like meal. Henry yeah, VIII. Well, you were at, I think, almost 7,000 last time we did this game. Yeah, yeah you know what? Uh, believe me, if you'd added up the uh, calories over the weekend, even my booze, you know, when I talked about that raging lobster drink. Yes. Oh, a 14,000-calorie drink. Isn't it's that wonderful? It's your birthday weekend, though. It is birthday. It's your birthday. It's birthday well, season. Yes. All right, we have to take another break. When we come back, it's <laughs> news you may not need, ladies and gentlemen, right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. And again, thanks to Angie Goff. Another yes. great part. We had a great Monday. Yeah. Great little birthday thing. It almost makes me think uh, that I almost makes me feel good about being 60. Here we go. Uh, we'll take a break and come back with more fun. Do you have a question, comment, or query for the Mike O'Mara Show? Or perhaps you're blackout drunk and need to express your verbal diarrhea? If so, call the Yak Shack at 888 What's going on? People are out of control. People are out of control. Made me feel weird. (laughs) Speaking (laughs) out of control. Time to read Rob's copy again. Oh, good. Here we go. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by the TMOS bonus packages. Well, get ready for it. Everyone is going to be talking about the 50th anniversary of the moon landing this summer. (laughs) Hogwash. What? (laughs) Everyone knows it was a fake stunt put on by NASA and Hollywood. Don't be fooled. It's a prevarication, a canard. It's a prevarication, a canard. You know, bullshit. (laughs) Nobody has ever been on the moon. Also, Stevie Wonder can see Prince is alive, and there's no such island as Greenland. (laughs) It's true. It's in quotes, Fake news. The world is full of lies. The only thing that you actually believe in is the TMOS bonus show. (laughs) A true source of laughter. Listen to a sixth uncensored commercial free episode of TMOS every week for just pennies. Order the TMOS bonus show and you will genuinely receive it. Click the banner on our website and you'll get access to all our bonus content and you'll be helping TMOS. So please buy the TMOS bonus show. One small step for man, one giant step for podcasting. The TMOS bonus show brought to you by Carling's Black Label Beer. Hey, Mabel, Black Label. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Oh, hold on. What's the matter? What is that? Wait, wait, hold on. What did I do wrong here? Play the thing. Yeah. New. There it is. Thank you. Hey, Mabel. Boo. Hey, Mabel, black label. I'm totally confused. All right. A uh, 59-year-old guy, his name is Ronald Eugene Griffin, and uh, he got some, he's got some stones. Okay. He tried to steal Halle Berry's entire house. Oh, I've heard about this. This is fascinating. Not rob it, take the whole thing. Griffin first shows up at Hallie's house in L.A. back in January. He was messing around with the locks, but was chased off by the gardener. In March, he comes back, and he brought a, a locksmith with him, <laughs> coming to her house. Hallie's employees caught them trying to get in, with Griffin arguing that he was the new owner of the house, and he had the deed to prove it. Mm. 
Hallie's team called 911, but so did Griffin. He'd already had one of the locks changed, and he told the cops that her people were trespassing on his property. Balls. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or or insanity, which I think might be a part of it. Hand when hand. the cops got there, they looked at Griffin's deed, discovered that he'd faked it. He was arrested and hit with a felony count of pure procuring and offering a false warranty deed and an additional count of petty theft. Hallie didn't know the guy, and apparently he didn't know it was her house. So uh, weird. that's kind of that's that weird. Is, but I love weird, the fact that right? he's, you're going to call 911? I'm going to call 911. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my God. Speaking of weird, Andrew Dice Clay is hitting the road for a new comedy tour, and he's bringing along one of his oldest and dearest friends, Roseanne Barr. Mike, I'm over it, here now. <laughs> yes, the Mr. and Mrs. America tour kicks off in September with shows in Long Island and Atlantic City. Good place to start. Yeah. Tickets for those shows will go on sale Friday, and more dates will be announced. I think it's going to kill. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any way it can't. Uh, Dice says, quote, when people ask about what she said, I say she's a comic. <laughs> we gotta stop policing comedians. Hey, Dice. This is America. <laughs> hey, Dice. How is it being in a star is board? <laughs> I'm over here now. She, he was great in a star is board. Killed. It was awesome. Uh, Dice goes on to say, she's an original. I'm an original, and people should just stop reading Twitter. Calm down with your political conversations. Twitter. Whoever's running the country, nobody else's life changes. We still got to go out there and make a living. Can't really argue with what no, he's saying. Uh-uh. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Have sex with your chicks and make your money. <laughs> hey, Dice, I, I don't want to go to that show. She's lucky. She's lucky to have a friend like him. That's she all is. I'm gonna say. Because I think he's the guy that's gonna be the, you know, oh, yeah. the the the, 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 it. the real thrust behind yeah. it. Uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife has been placed in a medically induced coma. This is sad. Beth Chapman, you've seen her on that show. Yeah. Uh, she's been battling throat cancer for years. TMZ says Beth was hospitalized due to a choking emergency that she experienced because she has trouble breathing uh, due to the cancer. About two weeks ago, she posted a picture of herself on Instagram with the hashtag, cancer will not beat me. But early yesterday morning, Dog tweeted, quote, please say your prayers for Beth right now. Thank you, love you. And I saw a little clip of him coming out of the hospital saying she's not doing good. So Um, that sucks for anybody. That sucks. We barely even had a chance to uh, miss Toys R Us. And it's already back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Let me see. The uh, new owners who brought Toys R Us... Uh, bought Toys R Us after it went out of business last year. Say they're all ready to uh, start opening stores again. Toys Rocket. They got a million toys and toys R Us that I can play with. I'm Still like this. Gula. I'm a Toys, toys R Us kid. They're shooting to open about six locations by the end of the year. The uh, new stores will be around 10,000 square feet. Uh, which is about a third of the size uh, that Toys R Us stores used to be. Uh, let's go to our man on the streets interview to find out uh, the you know way people are reacting to uh, Toys R Us. Let's listen. Um, I feel really happy. This is the most exciting day of my whole entire life. Why is that? Because when I was a baby, I didn't really know what Toys R Us was, and I never got to go in it before, and I'm really happy. Yeah, would you like to say hip hip hooray? Hip hip hooray! Oh, you're really happy about it, huh? Uh huh. Are you faking this or are you telling the truth? I'm telling the truth. Well, that's good. Thank you. That's a man on the street interview. That's really exciting because you know two of those six stores are going to be in Ellsworth. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, by the way, I don't feel played that they did the huge tug at your heartstrings. Toys R Us is going away campaign, and then six months later, it's coming back. I don't feel played. Well, you know what? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, that young man was being sincere. Of course. I'm not sure who he was, but he's I a man either. on the street. Uh, <laughs> let's say here. A woman named Tiffany Adams was on an Air Canada flight back uh, to her home in Toronto earlier this month Whoa. after she'd been visiting a friend in Quebec. Uh, it was a short flight. She had an entire row to herself and she fell asleep. Well, she woke up a few hours later and the plane was pitch black, cold, and parked. Oh, Somehow the no. crew, you know, sometimes I understand, I feel feel for these people, the deep sleeper, you know, the really deep, deep, deep sleepers, you know, it's like, 
you, you, you got to be a little more with it. Yeah. Uh, somehow the crew just forgot her on the flight. Her phone was dead, <laughs> so she couldn't call for help. She wound up finding a flashlight in the cockpit. She got it in the cockpit? Yep, and she pried the plane's door open and using the flashlight to sing, it used it to signal for help since it was a 50-foot drop to the ground. Luckily for her, a crew member was driving around and saw her. Uh, once he asked her how the hell should they forgot her, he helped her get down with a ladder and took her back to the airport. She slept. It was like a 90-minute flight, and she slept for three and a half it's, hours. It's like a metro ride. Yeah, she's drugged. Uh, she, uh, I wonder if she was taking medication. I bet. To sleep. I bet. Uh, she said she's been having insomnia ever since. Okay. But right, well, you know, I can understand how you would. In but, fairness you know. to her, the crew at the end of every flight. Yeah, you is really so should excited. check the seat. It's a human being. And they do. You know, they say that the cleaning crew is sometimes not attentive. But I can see them right. maybe missing a Kleenex. But a woman. Yeah, an entire body. <laughs> that is rough. Uh, Tough. Anyway. Hey, I want to tell you. Air Canada has called her repeatedly to talk to her about what happened. Uh, Air Canada confirmed that all this happened. They say they're investigating. So I guess they'll make it right to her. Uh, oh, well, we're going to look into it then. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I guess. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's right. Yeah, so you, you, you were chilly, eh? Hey, you didn't, yeah, hear, the na- you didn't hear the chime, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Elsinore beer. Uh, and now a little something, something. There's a 34 year old woman named uh, Stacy Rupp. Uh, she's in Phoenix. And on Wednesday night, she dropped her nine year old son off at McDonald's in Peoria, Arizona, and left. Uh, the employees eventually realized that the kid was there alone and they called the cops. They say the boy wasn't even that upset because when his mom drops him off like this, uh, she he said she, quote, always comes back. Well, that's good. And she did come back. The cops confronted her, and eventually she admitted that she'd left him there while she went to gamble at a casino. Mm, she couldn't take him along because he, quote, drives her crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she was arrested for child abuse and endangerment. Oh. This is why I've oh, always no. lobbied for daycare off the casino floor. You know, <laughs> big little room with a glass where you can see them while you're sitting in the slot machine. Not much to ask for. You know? You know, my kids, uh, you know, I, I bring him. I bring him to our Las Vegas show. Like, if, uh, the you know. smoke is like an effect for them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And you yeah. can recycle the balls for the ball pit into the Kino machine. <laughs> right. And it's, you know, if they get a little secondhand smoke, it slows them down. It's fine. We'll, uh, we'll take a break and we will come back with more fun and more thrills. The Audio Vault right here on the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. God, what a show. It's Political Persuasions. Hey, it's Chris Freitz with Political Persuasions. This week, Mike and I talk about the instability in Iran. How much of a threat is it? Plus, Mike was against Elizabeth Warren before he was for her. He tells us why he's changed his tune and flip-flop, plus warning lights for Joe Biden's campaign. Tune in. You can download (laughs) Political Persuasions at politicalpersuasions.com. My tunes. Stitcher. And wherever fine podcasts are listen, found. Listen to learn. Let people things. listen and they decide. Uh, Chris well, reports, anyway. they decide. Uh, I know. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by our Las Vegas show. Uh, Dateline, Headline News, and CNN Hollywood. Yes. This week, America's sweetheart Julia Roberts revealed the original ending of the modern classic Pretty Woman was different than what we saw on the screen. Mm-hmm. In the original draft, Richard Gere did not show up with a limo and roses to sweep her off her feet. The first idea, according to director Gary Marshall, was for Gere and Roberts to take an Uber to Las Vegas to see the TMOS 10th Anniversary Spectacular on Saturday, November 16th, 2019. When asked how this could happen, because Uber and Zappos and TMOS (laughs) didn't exist at the time of production, Marshall reminded us that he was dead (laughs) and and that the interview had to stop immediately. So be like Hollywood royalty. You can still get a ticket for the TMOS 10th Anniversary Spectacular Saturday, November 16th, 2019. The entire TMOS crew at the Zappos corporate headquarters with an amazing all-new show. Don't miss out. You will not get another opportunity, so buy now. Tickets are on sale now at MikeOmeraShow.com until they sell out, and they will sell out. You need to be there, and remember, the TMOS 10th Anniversary Spectacular brought to you by Zappos Las Vegas Gambling. (laughs) Gary Marshall. <laughs> Gambling. <laughs> That's what it is. Gambling. You go to Wisconsin, you hunt.
Yes, to me. Santa Claus. You yeah. give me joy even when we're not here. When you texted me last night that Dennis Hoff was doing a great job on the tight wire walk across Times it. Square. Did you see it, Rob? No, I, I did Oscar, not see did it. Did you look no, in? I, I, watched, I watched the end of it. I watched so the the Walenda, it. Nick Walenda does and his sister uh, do a uh, walk across Times Square on the wire for over half an hour. Wow. Yeah. And they cross, they cross in the middle. Now, they had safety harnesses, and I texted Rob. Yes, I, said, I was going to mention this. Really doesn't count. Yeah. Because it's a totally different, isn't it yeah. horrible? It's a totally different vibe when, it they, is. It is. when they have safety. But here's here's, go, here's okay. what it sounded like. You're going to start? I'm going to get started, okay? Yep. Liana, you're ready, babe. Go ahead. Okay. This is I'm when good. they you got cross this. on the same wire. Yeah. Don't forget that. Okay, I'm going to start. You have plenty of tether. Is it yep. hot? I got this. It's the getting up. I got it. I did it 25 times. Oh, this is tight. Hold on. You're good where you're at. Hold on. You don't have to move. Okay, I'm good. I'm going to get up. Yep. And Thank you're going to you do Jesus. it perfectly. Flawlessly. You did. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd rather a net. Yeah, uh, or something. He looks like a thinner version of the late Dennis Hall. But not yeah. much thinner. That's the weird uh, thing. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they did it. Look. They had the harnesses, but they didn't. They didn't slip. No, no one time. They, Wouldn't you rather it's not like that, the, though? I, I well, this is the first one. This, well, this is I'd horrible. rather nothing. I rather that's the whole. Well, the whole deal of a high wire is you're done. Yeah, but the, the fall is what gets you. If you have a harness, you're going to fall. I would say what fifty. Well, they feet? also would fall. I think they had a harness for a couple of. Well, who knows why they had the harness? But there are also people like directly below them. Yeah, and yeah. Dick, so they would have killed somebody on the ground. It's a Dick Clark production. The reason they were in harnesses is so they couldn't escape the set. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was, look. It was dramatic enough, uh, but they do have that kind of carny vibe. Oh, it's you horrible. Know, going, do you remember and, we and, watched it at your house in Florida once? Yeah, and, and they're it, sitting there going, "Thank the, you, baby the, Jesus. In thank you." you yeah, know. it was making us crazy. Yeah. 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 Thank you, baby Jesus. You know mm-hmm. what a friend we have. And then they they embrace with and then Natalie they catch Morales. Him. Big fat with Natalie Morales, who's yeah. no longer there. Who were the? Did you watch it from the beginning, or did you just tune in? I just tuned in for the end. Just for the end. I think wasn't wasn't Strahan one of the hosts? I think he might have been. Well, that's good. That's been, weird because sure. it's hard to get him to do something for ABC. <laughs> <laughs> and to catch him between game shows. Hard to do. All right, hard Mike. to do. A strong, and because it's your birthday, I'll call it a 60th birthday salute to our favorite company from now on, Del Monte. Have you ever bought their vegetables? Oh, sure I have. Sure. Years, yeah. yeah, how about the lady that bought a can of spinach? Ah, really? Ah, yeah, and she found in it. A dead bird. I dumped the spinach out into the bowl, and I took a little bite like I usually do before I put the spinach in the microwave. Sure. Well, then over here, it was kind of lumped up, so I went to break it up with my fingers, and I picked up a bird. They carry all kinds of stuff, and I thought, oh, my gosh, and I just ate a bite of that. I thought I was going to vomit. They offered me a $10 check for my troubles. And I was like, no thank you. They should have a health inspector check them out. I mean, that's a pretty major thing. To find something like that, that sticks with you. $10. Are we Americans though? Are are we? We're Americans, aren't we? With with our, with our, uh, our pop legalese, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a bad thing. They ought to have, like, you know, a health inspector or something like that. I took a bite out of it. I you went, in, that, I went in that spinach and found a bird. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big old dead bird. <laughs> oh, so last night on 60 Minutes, uh, Paul McCartney was on. And I know a lot about the Beatles. I know a lot about Paul McCartney. But he dropped one fact that I did not know. Now, I did know that Abbey Road was originally supposed to be called Everest. That was the original oh, name of that album. Like Mount Everest. But I never knew why they all looked so pissed off on the cover of Abbey Road. And he explains it. We had another title going on that we didn't really like. So I just said, hey, why don't we just call it Abbey Road? And what we could do, we just go right outside, walk across the crossing. It's done. You know, and it was like, yeah, this is outside Abbey Road after we'd made the Abbey Road Crossing yeah. picture. And I remember talking to John about his taxes. Someone said to me, you better warn him, because he doesn't know what's about going taxes. on. About taxes. That's why you have this glum look on your face? <laughs> That's maybe why he's got the glum look. I've got the, I need to talk to you about your taxes look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Because that was the last album they recorded, so they were breaking up at that time, and oh. John was going to have to fend for himself tax-wise. Was Abbey Road their last uh, album? It was the last they recorded. Let It Be would be released after, but the last oh, okay. one they recorded why was Abbey Road. Why did they break up again? Uh, it was uh, your fault. Oh. So... <laughs> 
No, they were all going, going different directions. Wasn't I think, it Yoko's fault? Uh, you know, the more I read about it, the less I think it's really? Yoko's fault. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I do. All right. Okay. I, I know it didn't help having her around, but I think that, <laughs> that would have happened anyway. Right. Yoko. Not great Yoko. when you, have, you know, you're a band of four guys and you're setting up in the studio and one of the things you request is a bed so your wife can sleep there. That's yeah. not great, not but cool. I think it would have happened That's anyway. Um, yeah, okay, cool. uh, Mike, you know, you've been hassled by your uh, Walmart greeter, haven't you? Yeah, and now we tell them to yeah, go scratch. Dateline Fantastic. Texas. They can't do any of it. I don't know. Let's, I just, just food for thought. Dateline Texas, a Walmart greeter, is 72, and he approaches a man, asks for his receipt, sees the receipt, and says, oh, you didn't pay for that case of Gatorade. Okay. I told him, if you want, you can scan and take it. I never told him you are stealing. He punched on my face with the close right hand. Then I fell down on the ground. Yes, I'm scared of working at that position. Never happened to me, but I was doing my duty. I was doing what I'm supposed to do. So, Mike, don't mess with Texas. Oh, my God. Wow. A, I don't think you... <laughs> you should not take that Gatorade out of here right now. I am going to make sure that you get uh, your comeuppance, Mr. Man. You are going to go to jail. And you know the you amazing thing is, someone, can you? The amazing no, thing. I would never hit somebody. I just said the whole idea is the passive aggression with that. It's like, uh, do you mind if uh, can I check your receipt? Said, no, you may not. <laughs> and they and they literally stop. They do. They, can, they, they can do because keep it moving. they can't. They can do it at Sam's Club. They cannot do it at Walmart. You do not have a contract with mm. them at Walmart. And that you know is what? your merchandise. They get their stinking hands off it. Stop it. You're not doing that. You know. Amazingly, do you know what flavor of Gatorade it was? Fruit punch. <laughs> Okay. That's your magic audio ball. I, I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say curry. Not curry. How dare oh, you? No, that's a, oh my god! I just said, stop it. You're not playing those things. <laughs> you went great, to the other soundboard <laughs> for the love of God. Have a great Monday and happy birthday, Mike. Happy Thank birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, John Bernie. What yeah. a wonderful surprise, Angie Goff. That was fantastic. Enjoy your cake. Thank you. We will. Thank you. Have Make nice sure everyone piece, sees it. Have a nice piece of cake. Have a nice piece of cake after it's over. Hope you enjoy that. And uh, I'll, I'm will i going to spend the rest of the afternoon playing with my, my birthday presents. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway. What are you going to do? Stack I'm, up your cards? I'm a monster. Stack up no. your cards? I, 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 I said to Shannon, I said, milestone birthday. Yeah. A watch. Yeah. A TV, yeah. Yeah. something something big, unexpected. Well, what are you going to do? You know, hey, I, I, I have my family here, and family is the most important thing. We'll just, I, there's no way I punch oh out of this. God. That's it. We, uh, we'll be back tomorrow for Oscar Santana right. and, and uh, Rob Spivak, Michael Maris saying, it was gr- John Bernie was massive. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. So long. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmerisShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Get me out of here! I gotta say it, it's hard to get a read on you. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you just kiss my left nut? The preceding program was not professional!